Good day to you one and all, it is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins' Ride to Game. Um, today I'm talking about one of my fa- most favourite ever artists, um, Neil Diamond. That's his real name. Um, he was born Neil Diamond a few years ago. Um, the song that I'm going to talk about is Solitary Man. You might remember that it was covered by the music band Him from uh, Finland once upon a time. Um, uh, but the original version was released in 1966, and for my money, it's one of the best songs out there. Just in Hawkins rides again. My voice is still tired from that arena tour. Again. Eagle eared viewers among you will recognise the uh, riff I just played there. recognizable the way I just played it there anyway Neil Diamond has sold over 130 million records worldwide that makes him one of the most best selling of artists of all times that's a lot of records isn't it um he also like wrote a lot of um songs that other people made more famous like um um for example red red wine that's one of his um not you before didn't write that they just sort of did what a lot of people consider to be the definitive version of it in the 80s. The other one would be, um, then I saw her face, now I'm a believer. And that was uh, The Monkees, um, and a few other people covered it since, but Neil Diamond wrote that too. Um, Solitary Man was Diamond's debut single as a recording artist, having already had moderate success as a songwriter for other artists. Um, it features on his album, The Feel of Neil Diamond. <clears throat> the Feel of Neil Diamond, that's brilliant. I wonder if that's the artwork should have just been him in like um <clears throat> like an outfit that had like patchwork and then various different sort of tactile um fabrics um, anyway the ballad is a the, a ballad of a loner looking for love that's how he described it um diamond himself would tell interviewers in the 2000s after 4 years of freudian analysis i realized i had written solitary man about myself in, in a 2005 Rolling Stone retrospective, Dan Epstein wrote, Solitary Man remains the most brilliantly efficient song in the Diamond Collection. There's not a wasted word or chord in this two and a half minute anthem of heartbreak and self-affirmation, which introduced the melancholy loner persona that he's repeatedly returned to throughout his career. I love the melancholy loner persona. I'm going to give it on a go. You have to do. You have to have squint your eyes like James Dean. Have a sort of rolled up cigarette hanging out your side of your mouth. Yeah, I'm melancholy and I'm alone. Um, anyway, I'm just going to play the song, show you how it works, and tell you why it's awesome. Can't say fairer than that, can I? So that opening riff is like a. So this here spells it out. It's going to be E minor is going to be the main the main crux of it because you've got the root there, and then you've got the third here, minor third. And then it goes to like the second or the ninth, and then he's then he's sort of riffing on um, on an E and a B, which is obviously the the fifth and the root of the E minor. And then this lovely little. And then he's in on an E minor, just pedalling until the singing starts. Oh, he does this. So bluesy. So I love the way it starts off with a uh, quite an unusual um, Christian name of one of his uh, former loves. Melinda was mine till the time that I found her. And then he goes, holding Jim. Who's Jim? Loving him. Then Sue came along, loved me strong, that's what I thought. Me and Sue, that died too. He's uh, a bit more vague about the way his relationship with Sue uh, petered out. But I mean, he's in, in, in no uncertain terms, the relationship is done because he said, that died too. Me and Sue, but that too. But there's something about in the delivery of, of this where he's kind of um, that melancholy loner thing. A, a lot of it is about um, 
a complete lack of enthusiasm. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, he's, he's, not, he's not angry about these, the way these uh, relationships have, have uh, ended. There's more of a sort of resignation in his voice. He's kind of like, um, that's just what happened, guys. That's it. And, 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 and I think the whole point of this song is that the realisation that this is his destiny. He's, uh, he's basically, it's him and the road. The road is his partner. Because he can't rely on humans. Don't know that I will, but until I can find me. There's a G, C, G, D. Then a C, D. Sorry, C, G, D. It's all really simple um, <clears throat> major chords in the chorus. Um, nearly all minor chords. Really uplifting major chords in the chorus um, as he's going. I don't know that I will, but until I can find me a lover who'll stay and won't play games behind me, I'll be what I am. You know what I mean? That's a solitary man. The girls will stay and won't play games behind me. And I'll be what I am. And then it goes back to this sort of the resignation of the I'll be what I am. Solitary man. Like that. It's just, it's such a brilliant song, and he's one of those songwriters that uses the minor chords effectively to really, I don't know, I don't, just to express the sadness, you know, all of it. Uh, I, I can understand that the Epstein analysis of it because it does, it feels like it's completely protein-rich songwriting. There's nothing in there to leave you in any doubt as to what the mood of this is. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's just it's so authentic. I've had a deal being where a small world. So in the second verse, rather than, you know, he's, he's done with sort of listing examples of why he's, he's chosen this path. In the second verse, he's, 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 he's not talking about specifically about any of his relationships. What he's actually just saying is like, I've had enough, you know. I had it to hear being where love's a small word, part-time thing, paper ring. You know the the uh, impermanence of these love affairs that he's had. It's frustrating. He's not going to do it anymore. It's just going to be him, him and the road, and his guitar, and presumably a small entourage, um, a water and towels man for some of the bigger shows. Um, yeah, I mean, it's about Neil Diamond. I say that in all seriousness, actually, because I went to see Neil Diamond play at Earl's Court. It was a few years ago now. Um, I wept. I'm not afraid to admit that. I'll look you in the eyes and tell you, I wept tears. It was brilliant. Um, but he had like um, two small tables on either side of the stage, just with a glass of water. And somebody handed him a towel at some point, who I presume was responsible for the water as well. A water and towels man. Every crooner should have one. Uh, I might get one for my solo album. I know it's been done having one girl. In the second half of this second verse, he's still got like a little bit of hope for a traditional sort of monogamous partnership vibe. I mean, that's where the me melancholy comes from and the resignation. It's kind of like he's, he's kind of, he understands that it's probably not going to work out for him, but he still has a little bit of hope. And then he saves that, he saves that for the second half of the second verse so that he can get into these positive chords uh, just in time for the second chorus. Don't know that I will, but until I can find me. So the first chorus is informed by the frustration of the failed relationships. The second one is, it's like, he's at the bottom of the love mountain, looking up at it going, maybe I, maybe, just maybe I can scale it. I probably won't, but maybe. And um, so that's when the, the fight in the, na in the narrative starts to emerge, I think. I'll be what I am, a solitary man. And then ironically, an enormous brass section comes to accompany him. Um, and he's not solitary anymore. He's surrounded by trumpeters, trombonists, whatever the other ones are. Tuba players, probably. I'm not sure. It's, it, it might not be a Hovis advert in there, but it's, it's got like a slightly Hawaii Five O thing in the bounce of the rhythm tracks. So I think this is like a, an uplifting moment, really. Imagine him sort of peeling away from the microphone and, and you know, doing a little bit of uh, 
a, a twist, maybe you might do a twist. Yeah, I'd probably go for a twist at that point. But you know, as I said before, I'm not a choreographer. I am a choreographer. Absolutely brilliant. That's one of my favorite songs. You can hear why, can't you? Powerful stuff, really inspiring. I don't make them like that anymore, do I? Justin Hawkins writes again, again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, and uh, listen to the music of Neil Diamond. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>